And we're live. Jared Fleming, right what's up, dude? Hey, buddy. How you doing, man? Good. So we're going to be putting this on YouTube. Um, and, and what Jared, we talked about actually filming the podcast where we put it up on YouTube and then you could like basically see us both talk. Yeah, yeah. I think that's cool. Yeah, I think that'll be really fun. You know, something that would be awesome if we get a chance to which who knows but uh if we can get a, a podcast one where al uh later this week that'd be pretty sweet yeah when do you land in milwaukee uh i fly in chicago thursday so my dad jen and i we uh we're staying in chicago thursday night and then we get in friday and then we leave sunday afternoon okay okay so i fly in saturday at like noon um, there's no flights out past five on Friday, which is super frustrating. So we fly in Saturday at like 12 o'clock and then, uh, my athlete Kyle doesn't lift till, uh, five 30. So I'm good. So mm-hmm. nice. Uh, are you, when are you flying back to Oregon? Well, Sunday at 7 AM. So it'll be a little oh, bit of, wow. A you're yeah. coming in and going right out. That's crazy. It's a bam, bam. Yeah. Gotcha. So just, gotcha. Yeah. Well, either way, it'll be cool to just, you know, grab a beer and hang out, whether we get a, you know, have a chance for a podcast or not. That'll be, that'll be nice to see it. It's been a while. When was the last time? Well, it's been four, four, four and a half years since I've been to a USAW national competition. <sighs> wow. So, I mean, wow. the, la- the last one is 2014 American Open. So what is mm. that? 15, 16, 17, 18. Jeez, yeah, for your and you didn't come. You didn't compete at that one, did you? You just coached there. Is no, that is that right? Yeah, I coached my Charlotte weightlifting team. Yeah, I had about eight athletes at that competition. So yeah, yeah. Oh, um, were you were you still living in Charlotte in 2014? Yeah, that was Charlotte 2014 when I owned my own gym. Whoa, wow! Took out the squad. I, I moved there in 2000, either summer summer of 2014 or spring of 2014. I didn't realize that uh, that there was a uh, crossover there. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, there was That's crazy. So yeah, it's hmm. been a while. I can't tell you, I'm so excited to get back out there. I mean, to be back at a USAW national competition and see so many great people and coaches and athletes and just the old crew and old school people and new school people and old competitors like yourself and teammates. And, uh, I'm really looking forward to this trip. Yeah, man. You know, I haven't been to a, now that you say it, I, when you said four years, I thought that was crazy, but I haven't been to a, my last national meet, so I competed in the at Worlds in 2015, but my last national meet was nationals in, I think, Dallas in 2015. So for me, it's been almost, it's been over three years, three and a half years. So wow. for both of us, it's yeah. been a long time. This is going to yeah. be, this is going to be so fun. And, um, I can't wait to watch you lift. How you feeling Fleming? Yeah, good. I, I'm feeling really good. And I, I think more than anything, I'm feeling mentally good. I'm in a really good mental place. Right. And, uh, and that's good. I mean, you know, as well as anybody, the, the pressure and anxiety and stress that, you know, guys like you and myself put ourselves under, but, you know, used to put ourselves under to compete. And I feel, I feel some of that, but not, not to the point of like feeling sick. You know, I think I'm, I'm just in a good place. You know, my life doesn't depend on whether I get first or third or second anymore, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think you're going to do great. Like you're saying, you're in a great place. You're motivated you're hungry. You're hungry. You're, you know, that's another thing too, is that you were on top for so long where I, I don't want to speak for you, Fleming, but I feel like now that's a climb up and you're, you came out of retirement and you're making, you know, a run at this again, there's kind of a hunger that you know, might feel like, you know, when you first started. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's a different kind of hunger though. It's, I, you know, I did a, I did a podcast this morning with a guy that uh, his name's Michael Horner. He's a, he's a really cool guy. He's a friend of mine now. And, uh, yeah, my dude, we talked, yeah, we talked about this, uh, a little bit this morning, but, um, for me, it's about a, it's about a win for Jared now and not a win for, um, external things. You know, I used to, depend i used to think that i had to beat you and phil sabatini and kendrick to to have self-worth and now it's about going out and hitting the list that i know will challenge me 
and feeling good about that. So rather than basing my self worth on who I beat, it's based on, am I happy with the numbers I lifted and did they challenge me? You know, it's, it's a different, it's a whole different ball game for me now. Yeah. Yeah. It's about you. It, and that's great, man. I mean, I think that's why you're going to have more fun at this meet than you ever have. I mean, honestly, it's going to be a good time. Russell Jordan's lifting, which is going to be great to see. I know a lot of listeners here have been following Russell the past few years. Um, you know, Kyle Lee, my athlete's lifting. Um, so, I mean, just as a spectator, I mean, I know I'm going out there to coach Kyle Lee, but just as a spectator watching you and, and so many great lifters compete live and up close and not on a live stream, I, I'm, just, I'm going to be the biggest fanboy there, man. I'm going to be in the audience <laughs> cheering you guys on, yelling and, and throwing chairs and, <laughs> and, yeah. and going crazy, man, and it's just going to be great. So, yeah. Is, uh, is Jess coming out or just, just you? No, she's here with the kids. Yeah. Yeah. I figured tough. that would be kind of a tough thing to swing. Right. I'm flying in, you know, and flying out. Um, yeah. But look, yeah. like you said, there's a lot of time. I mean, I fly in at 12. I have all day, all night to hang out with people and watch great lifting. And like you said, grab a few brewskis, mingle, um, connect, man, reconnect with so many, you know, kind of like my second family as far as weightlifting goes. How do you feel about that, Fleming? I mean, you know, you've seen the dark side of weightlifting, you've seen the ups and downs, you've seen great people, you've seen people that have been kind of two-faced, and um, like any world, I think, little, every kind of little world that you're in, there's, there's always this. It's not just weightlifting. How do you view the weightlifting community now that you're coming back for round two? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I, I think what I found was I found who my, you know, I, I think the weightlifting community is a, a family in and of itself. Mm -hmm. And just like any family, you have people that you like, people you don't like, people who really care about you, others who could give a shit. And uh, I think I was really resentful after I, you know, had my injury in 2015 because a lot of people that I thought were good friends of mine, I never heard from, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and I kind of started to see who my real friends were. So I would definitely say the weightlifting community is a family to me. I've been, I've been in weightlifting for 17 years now wow. competing. Wow. And yeah. Yeah. Wow. Uh, honestly, Amazing. I don't know of any, to be honest with you, I don't know of any, but, and I'm sure there is, but I can't think of a single person competing at the AO that's been, uh, competing longer uh, than well, I have, to be honest with you. I think you have, um, is Osorio competing? Cause I know he's been in the game for about 14 years. Yeah. Yeah. And so 14. Yeah. I mean, he's, so, he's close, but yeah, I mean, I don't, Ian I Wilson. mean, there's, there might be a master's athlete that's competing. That's been in it yeah. you know, for 20 or, or, or so, but not that I can think of, to be honest with well, you. Well, you know what? I'm excited to see speaking of that Fleming. And I love your answer, by the way. That's, 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 that's so true. Wow. Gosh, you've seen it all. You were before the CrossFit boom during the CrossFit boom, you know, post CrossFit boom of weightlifting. You've seen it all the growth. Um, speaking of that, I'm excited to kind of see, I'm excited to see this USAW national competition in 2018, almost 19. Uh, cause I'm used to kind of the, the old school USAW in a way, if you think about it. Yes. Been, skate, skate town USA 2013 right. nationals was in a a podunk skating rink with now, let me just old say, carpet. It is, that is true, but I feel like that gets a bad rap because, or not that meet gets a bad rap, but looking back at old w, USAW meets gets a bad rap on that because that, that was the worst meet ever. It, it, yeah, but, and that was my first national championship that I won too. It's yeah. pretty funny. Oh, geez, gosh, you're right. Um, but most meets, even back then, were awesome. They were well put on. They were huge. They were beautiful. Yeah. They were big. Yeah. It was a one-platform competition, which you can't, you, you got to miss that. You got to miss that. Um, but yeah. I'm excited to kind of see how these meets are now, you know, having 25 platforms and kind of a lot of CrossFitters there and just new people, you know, the growth of the, of the sport. It's going to be interesting to see, you know, you know, what's cool, John. Um, I went to AO three in Vegas with, with my team here back in September and they had five, yeah, five platforms. It was the biggest meet in history. And what was so cool is that I would, I would say that you, me, and a couple other people, uh, but I would say that you and I probably have taught, as far as American athletes have taught more seminars than, than mm -hmm. probably anyone else. 
And what was so cool was that I, I saw more people that I taught at seminars with Outlaw Way and, oh, and wow. different seminars wow. than I knew from the weightlifting community outside CrossFit. Wow, see, that's crazy. Yeah, that it was crazy. so cool. There's so many new people. It's it's amazing. Well, I got to do something where on my Instagram or something, I got to, you know, I got to I gotta communicate with people like, hey, I'm at the coffee stand. Let's meet up for coffee or I'm getting lunch at, you know, or we're doing dinner at this place at this time. Like, come join us. Yeah. You know, like yeah. you're saying, like, I want to chat with people, you know, from the past and throughout the journey, yeah. you know. We should do that. You know, if you, I compete Saturday at 320, you know, something that would be really cool would be if we, if we both did that, like you, me, Jen, my dad, and we just all went and grabbed, you know, like some food and like a, like a brew right at the, uh, at the venue or like a pub right next door and just said, Hey, like come hang out with us at like eight o'clock and we'll all just kick it and, yeah, and chat. I think that'd be really cool to see who comes out and who we've met and, who, you know, people that we haven't seen in years. I think that'd be really cool. Yeah, let's. Do, can we do that, please? I, I, yeah. I'm really looking yeah. forward to you know, to to seeing people and you know reconnecting and you know all that good stuff. So, all yeah, right, yeah, I think that'd be awesome. Yeah, let's do it. Let's We're gonna have Saturday some night. fun Saturday night. Anybody going to AO Finals uh, this weekend? We're, me and Fleming are looking to, to uh, forward to seeing it. And as far as live stream goes, Fleming, where can they watch uh, the, the the basically you compete and everybody else? Yeah, they. Uh, if you go to usaweightlifting.org, they uh, it's it's kind of tough to navigate the site at times. But if you go to the website on the event details, they'll have a, a live webcast up. It's not up. I checked it a few days ago. They didn't have a link yet, but it should be it should be right there. I'll post yeah. it in my Instagram bio too uh, as soon as it's up. Yeah. You know, it's funny because now that I don't, I'm not lifting right now, and I'm just full time coaching. I. I have more respect for weights. And what I mean by this is when I see somebody weightlift in front of me, I'm like blown away. And when you're not lifting, you're more blown away. I'm just, I, I was watching Kyle train the other day. He had his openers on Monday. And I was like, wow, that's so impressive and cool. And it's so funny how when you're not lifting, you're just more blown away by weightlifting. Yeah. Yeah. And I was loading his weights and kind of helping him out, you know, with loading the bar and everything. And I remember thinking like, God, this is so heavy. Like these reds are so heavy and these greens are so heavy and, you know, moving the bar and kind of picking it up to move it over or something like that. I was like, there is no way this guy is going to put this over his head. And it, it's so funny. I was going to talk to you about that, Fleming, because I know you've coached so many seminars around the world. But it's interesting as, as, as a coach's perspective, you're almost more in awe of the sport than when you're doing it yourself in a way, you know? You know it's funny you say that because I've had the, I've had the same experience. I think, I think that when you're in it and you're at the top, you, you're, I say you, but I mean we, you know, mm -hmm. are less humbled and a little more arrogant. Right. And right. you don't have the, appre <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Right. You don't, you don't have the appreciation for what it's like when you're in it and you're doing it, you don't appreciate it as much as you do when uh, you don't appreciate things as much until they're gone, basically, you know? And then when you, you can't lift the weight or you're not lifting the weight, it's humbling. You know, like I watch guys snatch 160. I'm like, man, I can't do that right now, but I, I used to do that all the time. And so back then 160 was like a warm up weight. And now it's like, damn, like that's amazing. You know? So it's definitely more impressive now that I can't do it or can't do the weights I did then. So I feel you. I, I have had the same, uh, realizations. Yeah. It's insane. You know, saying what you said was, is probably an understatement uh, for how we were back then. You know, as far as being <sighs> yeah low key, we were crazy. But man, yeah. when you're on top of <laughs> yeah. when, let me tell you something. When you come from where we come from, you know, and you're on top of the world, and there, I always tell my haters this. Like, I understand looking back. Sometimes I'm like, oh man, North, like you were really just going crazy, man. Like, calm down. But it's so well. Here's what the haters and kind of some of the people that might judge you for that. And, and speaking about myself, not you, but. It's like, and you could relate to this, Jared. You know this because when you're fucking in it, it's totally different than looking back on it. 
Oh, yeah. It's so easy for me to sit here and watch a, a video from five years ago at a competition and be like, as I'm relaxed on my couch drinking tea before bed, <laughs> going, geez, John, you were a little you were a little amped up and cocky that meat. That's so easy to say. And I think that's what a lot of people on YouTube do. They they get on the comment section and be like, you know, he's cocky, he's arrogant, he's so amped up, it's too much. But when you're actually in my shoes, like you have been Fleming, obviously, and you're in that fucking moment, there's no controlling you. <laughs> It's yeah. like yeah. you're a caged animal that's just been set free and you're 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 just man, you're just you're you're just on it, man. You're just going nuts. Yeah. I think you know, I, I think that as long as you're authentic and you're you're sharing your true passion and you're sharing the energy that comes to you naturally, mm-hmm. I, you know, I don't regret any any of the emotion that I ever shared competing because that was my truest form. You know, and and you got some um, shit with the America F. Fuck yeah, yeah. You got yeah, some stuff you know, on that. Yeah, but you know, I mean, it was all it was all love. Yeah, you know, I mean, was. if someone came up and talked to me after that, it's not like fuck you, bro. It's like yeah, thanks for your support and your love. And you know, anyone that's met you know you or or myself in person know that like we're just people like everybody else. We're just really you know, especially at the time. Yeah, incredibly passionate and full of energy for for the sport and for the snatch and clean and jerk. And there's nothing wrong with that. As, you know, if you were an arrogant cocksucker and you know slammed bars, and then pe- when people came up to you, you were too cool for school, then then you're just then you're a douchebag. But yeah, you know, yeah. if you have fun, you're loving what you're doing, you're passionate about it, and then you're also a good person. Like, I mean, hey, what you know, what, no harm, no foul, you know. Right, right. There's definitely a way to do it. Yeah, like I think you nailed it on the head, man. You got to be truly passionate about what you're doing. You can't be, you know, in in a weird way, you almost can't take yourself serious. And I I never did. Like when I walked off the platform, I'd I'd be like, man, that was nuts. <laughs> like I'd be like, <laughs> that's awesome. I'd be like, what the yeah. fuck just happened? Like that was crazy. Like I was a wild man. Like I, you know, I needed to take a deep breath and, you know, what a ride that was. I would say and. um go out to dinner with people and just be totally normal and, and laugh about it almost. But I think that if you take yourself fully serious, that's when people are kind of like, you know, this guy's a little weird, you know? Yeah. Hey, yeah. Baby. Hey, it's Jess. Yeah. Jess, you want to say hi to Fleming? Hey, Jared. What's up? Hey, Jess. I'm good. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Merry Christmas. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you. Happy holidays. Happy holiday, babe. We're in Portland. It's 2018. Let's be politically correct. <laughs> No, thanks. Okay. Sorry. I've been watching uh, a lot of South Park uh, lately with Jen and uh, the principal, the PC principal, <laughs> yeah. and uh, the strong woman, vice vice principal. It's pretty. It's actually pretty funny. Do you guys ever watch that? Oh, I, I haven't seen the new season, but I've watched every episode of South Park. Yeah, it's yeah. it's actually pretty. It's pretty great. It's pretty hilarious. Um, hey, babe, to end the show, do we just push stop? Yeah. Okay. Okay, this is weird for me. The whole new are you are here. you you using a new platform or yeah we don't do Spreaker anymore so we're we're doing the uh, the Garage Band here oh all right yeah. right on so right on. what's up babe what's that babe they countered sorry Fleming our house is on sale and we just got an offer today oh wow and we're in you... we're in a bidding war. Oh, we're going oh, back oh for forth. the for the house you're trying to get into. No, we're trying to sell this house, and then we're oh, gonna, bidding war between two people. Oh, well, that's a good place to be. Yeah, yeah. So there's nice. it's, it's crazy right nice. now. And then once we sell this home, we're going to be moving into to a new home. So it's a crazy time right now. Nice. Um, well, cool. That's exciting. Yeah. So we'll see how this goes. But um, where were we? Um, uh, not taking yourself too seriously. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Not taking yourself too seriously. Weightlifting. Um, so yeah, it's going to be good to get out there lifting weights, having fun. Now I will be lifting in the, Oh, well I can't lift in the, I can't. <laughs> I can't. When is it? When is your sanction? Man? Yeah. You knew, you knew. Cause didn't Pat Mendez get in big trouble for that a few years ago for what he was in the back room lifting and he was still when? banned. And so they, uh, they got uh. mad at him, but so my ban ends February 2nd. So literally uh, in less the, than two months. Oh, and you won't have time to get a qualifying total in for Arnold. Well, no, not talking about me lifting as far as 
Uh, well, first of all, I have to ghost coach on Saturday mm. because I can't mm. coach as a band athlete. So do you have to have another, do you need us yeah. to coach Kyle? Mark. Yeah. I got a Mark's guy, been, a guy okay. named Mark who is kind of the, Kyle's almost kind of like another coach for Kyle. Um, gotcha. who's been a friend oh, of his for a while. That's so. tough, man. It's going to be tough not being in the, in the back room, but I mean, I'll be there. Yeah. I'll be close, you know, pre meetings. We're ready to go. Um, yeah, it, yeah, it's going to be tough because I'm going to be watching, you know, from basically the the stadium. The stands, Oof. yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, your team understands, you know, right? Or I, or, yeah, I'm sure they do. So. But I can't lift in the back room. I can't lift weights at all. I can't. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I don't. I mean, I don't know what's in the fine print with that. There's so many great. Yeah, ideas, yeah. But I don't think that I'm I'm allowed to go. I can't go in the back room. Hmm. Well, at least it's going to be up soon. So you're saying that you cannot compete at the Arnold? Uh, why is that? Because you can't. I mean, if your band's up February second, the Arnold is the end of February. Is it just that you don't have time to get a qualifying total in? What's What's the issue there? It's, but do you have to qual? I don't think you have to qualify for the Arnold. E, well, since it's AO one, oh, there's a geez. qualifying total for AO one. So you and I think the qualification period ends January. Yeah. So no, thirtieth or February. It might honestly, John. It might be like February second or third. That's I mean, crazy. you'd have to you'd have to look. I mean, there's a there's a chance someone listening would definitely know. Um, but yeah, it's within it's within a, a week or two there. Um, okay. For to get a qualifying total in, it's, it's well. Close. Either way, it's a win-win for me because if I can lift at the Arnold, great. I mean, I asked my wife to marry me at the Arnold um, on stage there, so there's a lot of great memories. Yeah. Um, but if that I can't, was in lift, 2000. That was 2011, 12, right? Or what year was that? 2011. 11. Okay. Yeah, good memory. And Jared Enderton was hiding the ring, and uh, he was right next to me, and then he. He had it hidden in his singlet, <laughs> and then he pulled it oh, out, man. gave it to me, and then I pulled Jess up on stage. Um, but that, yeah, that was a, that was a good time. But no, if I can't lift at the Arnold Fleming, then I get to actually coach. Um, yeah, right, right. So because I'll be free and um, no longer banned, <laughs> and uh, be able to be in the back room and all that good stuff. So yeah, 2019. I mean, Team Dark Orchestra is becoming an official barbell club starting February. I'm coaching starting February. You know. Uh, lifting starting February. I mean, we're going to have one of the biggest barbell clubs in the country. I mean, we have hundreds yeah. of athletes ready to go. That's great. Yeah, we uh, <clears throat> American Muscle Weightlifting. We just competed in the USA W Club Showdown. We got third, man. It was what? pretty sweet. Damn. Yeah, out of all the all the teams, do you did you know much about that event that they did? No, or I, not? no I I saw something about that on Instagram, and I couldn't figure out. Yeah, yeah. So they had a they had a showdown between all the teams and all the USAW teams, where the best snatch and clean and jerk from every athlete, they added them all together, and the total amount of weight lifted was uh basically your score or your total and right. so american muscle we got third out of everybody which was pretty dope wow so see, yeah we're yeah so man, our team's doing awesome so how many athletes do you have that competed in that in so i don't know ex the exact number i think on our team we have like 300 and some people Oof. but uh yeah but uh, people that competed probably 40 35 or 40 probably and you okay. know Okay. You, we had youth, we had masters, we had, I mean, tons of people. It was right. really great. The most of the team came out and, uh, and or, or a good chunk of people came out and did it, which was really awesome. Right. So, how so. many athletes out of so you have a team of th like about three hundred and fifty? How many athletes are registered with your barbell club? Yeah, because that's uh, a good question I have because I have about the yeah. same amount, like roughly right around that kind of three hundred and sixty mm -hmm. ish. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, yeah. once we get a barbell club starting February. How many of those athletes are actually going to be registered for that? Yeah, so we have a we have a really interesting model with the team. So we have a, we have a, probably right around a dozen affiliates, and our affiliates are allowed to keep their local uh, club if they want. So they can either be American Muscle or their local club. So, for example, like uh, Zion Barbell in Utah, mm -hmm. most of their athletes maintain their identity as as Zion Barbell. Um, whereas some of our other affiliates, oh, uh, like one in, uh, Oregon or not Oregon, uh, Washington, uh, across at Lacey, yeah. they're all American muscle weight thing. So out of, out of our 
total team, probably you're right about 35 or 40 are on actually wow. American Muscle but, Weightlifting. But think about that. Yeah. That is a that is a big ass team. I mean, back in our heyday, you know, showing up to a competition anywhere and having a team full of 40 people was un- unheard of. Yeah. Well, that's the cool thing with, with the boom in CrossFit is right, that right. there are more people doing weightlifting. And now with team, I mean, honestly, there aren't, if I'm, if I'm, if I really stop and think, uh, the dark orchestra and American muscle weightlifting are the only, and, and, and I, you know, I might have to take the statement back if someone corrects me, but I don't know that there's there are any other online based teams that are about weightlifting. So there's there's what about Cal American strength? Muscle, Cal Strength, Cal Strength, right? Of course, Cal yeah. Strength, American Muscle, uh, the Dark Orchestra, and then you have Invictus, but they're they're pretty much strictly CrossFit. Yeah, see that's the thing. Nah, nah, yeah, they yeah. See, there's so, so really, many there's so many like CrossFit program right. teams or whatever that do like weightlifting for CrossFit. <laughs> But I don't think they're like an actual barbell club, right? They may be. They may be. They may, they may be, be. You're right. But they don't. But I don't think that they're. But their goal. But their primary right uh, objective is to improve their weightlifting for CrossFit. You have this is my interpretation of it, anyways. Whereas yeah. we, Cal Strength, you know, Dark Orchestra and American Muscle are purely weightlifting focused teams uh, focused on weightlifting catalyst athletics catalyst yeah yeah that's true that's true waxman yeah, there's definitely sean waxman yeah okay yeah so they're definitely more than i was thinking yeah it's yeah. but it is one of those things where like at first you're like okay i know the few big ones but then as you think you're like oh wait a minute this person this person yeah. this person this person yeah so yeah i think um, but you're right though there is not that yeah. many authentic barbell so, clubs out there you're right as far as all yeah, well, that and I mean the ones that are based. So, strictly. for example, we we are almost strictly a remote based team. We have affiliates uh, all around the country, but we are based on the internet, right. and that's how that's how myself, my father, our our regional coaches. That's how we coach the team is through you know our Facebook group, and yeah. and we have the affiliates, and we have our regional coaches that coach at those facilities, yeah. you know, in person. But as far as our headquarters, I mean, it's, you know, it's the online team. Yeah, absolutely. And I love that. That's what, you know, it's so funny because me, gosh, me and Russell have talked so much about like the pros and cons of technology. Um, you know, you know, I watched Black Mirror, you know, you get freaked out by yeah. what technology yeah, doing to our that. brains and our lives and all that kind of stuff. And hey, you go to Red Robin and every family member there is just addicted to their phone and the, and the screen. Yeah. And, yeah. It's, and it's sickening. It truly is, especially for kids. But this, I mean, I definitely will let my my kids watch the screen, the screen time, of course, but not that much. We limit it, but it's one of those things where the one of the pros to it is the connection between people in the in the world mm. of weightlifting, like you guys are doing with yeah. American Muscle. You know, it's it's so fantastic how you could reach a guy or a girl out in the middle of nowhere, training by themselves mm-hmm. in their garage, and how there can be an impact from your experience all the way to their garage. Yeah, we just affiliated a gym in Pinedale, Wyoming. That's where my dad and I went and hunted elk back in October. I mean, it's in the middle of nowhere. I mean, look on a map and look where Pinedale, Wyoming is. And we have an affiliate there, which is awesome because we can offer, you know, our contacts, our, you know, our network, our, our skills to them where they don't have anyone remotely near them with uh, much of a history in weightlifting. So yeah. it is pretty great. And, you know, in our, our mission, which I believe is very similar to yours, is our goal is to use the internet and social media to develop friendships that become friendships in person. So we we use the Facebook group and social media to interact online, and then we do you know we do team events. We do AL one as a team, AL three as a team, um, and then we'll do summer training camps where uh, you know the team members can come out and stay. Like this last summer, we had uh, ten. 10 teammates come out, stay at my parents' house. We did a week long training camp. My mom made like lunch and dinner for people. And we shot guns and rode four wheelers and just hung out. And, and that's where we were able to take the teammates that had met and talked online and actually develop like real friendships in person. And I think that is where the social media and the internet can help when you can take an online friendship and make it a real in person right, friendship. And right. that's what we're trying to accomplish. Right, a hundred percent. It's off. Oh, let's go, let's go. 
Yeah. Stand I mean, that's bars, like, you know, maybe. back, back a couple of years ago, I think it was a couple of years ago when you, Jared and, and Jess did that, uh, retreat. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, same, same concept. Mm-hmm. I mean, trying to take the oh, team like, and bring everyone together in person and develop like real human interaction. I mean, that's mm-hmm. what it's all about. Yeah. And we're doing that again. You should come Fleming. We have, uh, yeah. A few, few spots left. And, and I know that sounds very sales of me to say we have like two spots left, but we actually do. Cause we had this, we rented this huge cabin, this 15 room mansion cabin in Colorado, oh, that's in, sweet. In Colorado in, in the middle of nowhere. And yeah, where, Oh babe, <laughs> it's on the website, the attitude Oh man. I'll have to look. Yeah. It's in Colorado. It's in Colorado. It's a oh, 15 shoot, yeah. bedroom mansion cabin and there's lakes everywhere. We have activities planned. Mm. It's our third annual oh, life retreat, so please come. There's there's two spots open. Obviously, you could be kind of more of a counselor, and you can just bunk with me. Yeah, you could just sleep. Yeah, dude. Bed. I mean, I live in Denver, so oh, okay. depending on where in Colorado it is, like Jen yeah. and I could just drive out, kick it for a day, hang out, and then come home. You know what I mean? Right. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's four days, five uh, four nights, five days, but you could come out just for a day or two. Dude, uh, but yeah, I think we'll have that, to off air. We'll have to, to yeah. chat more about that. That's sweet. I didn't. When is it? In the spring? Oh, my God. I should know this. My brain is not working right now. Dude, yeah. No day. worries, man. No worries. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that's, that's sweet. That's sweet. It'll be summer. It'll be hot and sunny. We'll put it that way. Yeah. But yeah. I wanted to mention right. something uh-huh. on that is like to kind of end our conversation with this, this topic because I think it's a good one is that, you know, you're right. It, there are not – this as much as the sport has grown – in my opinion, there's still not that many authentic weightlifters in the United States. You're, you don't find, it's hard to find a weightlifter that just does weightlifting and competes in weightlifting. There's a lot of hybrid athletes that like to do a lot of different stuff or that do weightlifting to better themselves at another sport, if that's football, if that's CrossFit, if that's whatever it may be. Um, you know, to find a weightlifter that really dives in with weightlifting, I honestly think is rare. And I think the sport is, is smaller than people think. And I can even make the case, and this might sound really stupid, that there are less authentic weightlifters now than there were back in 2010. And I know that might sound crazy. Hmm. Yeah. But if you really That's, think about it, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, you very well may be right. Um, I mean, most, and this is a guess. I I do think that most weightlifters do dabble in CrossFit, but I think, you know, I mean, if you look at just sport development, I mean, we are supposed to, I mean, we're told we're supposed to, and I, I believe it, but we're supposed to become the best athlete we can be period. So if you look at developing athletes as in youth and junior, and even collegiate, uh, the, you want to have as much of an athletic background as possible. And then, and then, uh, specify as you get older. And I think that a lot of, again, I'm just, I'm just guessing I'm, these aren't facts, but I think a lot of athletes that do CrossFit didn't necessarily do competitive sports growing up, except with the exception of elite CrossFit athletes. So I think that weightlifters now that do CrossFit actually helps to develop a more well-rounded, athletic base so in a way doing crossfit can help weightlifting so to say that there are less purely authentic weightlifters you could be right but the question is does crossfit hinder or promote being a better weightlifter right right and this is for the comments here i would love to get people's reaction on the comments here because this is a really we really tapped into an interesting conversation right now um with probably a lot of different opinions. I personally think that um, doing CrossFit as a weightlifter hurts you as a weightlifter. Now, there's, there's, there's many different reasons to that. First of all, let me just state by saying this. The number one reason I feel that I'm right on that is the diet. I feel that weightlifters that get into the CrossFit world eat like CrossFitters. And it's the worst thing you can do because you're not recovering like you should in the sport of weightlifting for CrossFit. Yeah, sure. It's two different worlds. And I think that brings me to my next point is that people think there's a lot of carryover between weightlifting and CrossFit. I don't think there is. And I know I get a lot of shit for that. I mean, the, yeah. the, the snatch and clean and jerk is not even in CrossFit. And people are always like, what are you talking about, John? You're an idiot. 
And I said, well, you're allowed to press. And because you're allowed to press, it's a completely different lift. And that's a whole different rant I have that I've done in the past. But yeah, between the diet, between the difference in techniques, and just the overall mindset, I think it hinders. But that's just my opinion. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think it depends on, you know, I think, I think it depends, it depends on the box that you're putting a CrossFitter into, right? Are you, right. are you throwing them into a full blown, I eat paleo every day. I don't eat right. like I, I'm keto, you know, whatever, whatever, what kind of box are you throwing the term CrossFit athlete into? And yeah. I think that I would, I would go as far as to say that if you want to focus on weightlifting, I think cr- doing some CrossFit workouts to promote blood flow recovery, um, not necessarily having a purely keto or paleo diet. I think that doing some CrossFit workouts can help. So for example, um, leading the last probably two months, maybe three months have been probably working, doing weightlifting three, mm-hmm. three sessions a week and doing two CrossFit workouts a week. I, I teach a couple CrossFit classes and I jump in with the class. So I've been working out pretty consistently five days a week, but only three of those are weightlifting. But with that being said, I'm not eating keto. I'm not eating necessarily paleo. So I'm getting plenty of calories right. so, to and I think sustain that, you're, that type of training. I think you're doing it. I think that you're onto something because I think you're right. I, I, look, I was probably a little extreme. I think it, it, it does matter the situation. I was kind of just doing a whole blanket you know, thing, yeah. of my opinion. But I like the fact, though, that you're entering the CrossFit to – do it for reasons for weightlifting, but you're not getting sucked into the world. And I think that was my point is yeah, you're not, yeah, you're not, absolutely. you're not like ghostbusters where you're sucking the ghost into the thing where now you're, you're eating like a crossfitter and you're recovering like a crossfitter and you're stretching like a crossfitter. And, um, you know, and, and, yeah. I, and I know the stretching thing's a, a debate too, but you know, I, I have my own thoughts on stretching, you know, with, as weightlifters, I think that, um, Overstretching and weightlifting is bad. I'm just going to say it right now. I know I'm going to get a lot of heat for this, but I don't know. I could go on, but I think you're right. You're not being sucked into the world, and I think that a yeah. lot of weightlifters do get sucked in, and it does affect them. Oh, yeah, John. I think you know when you talk about overstretching, I mean, that is definitely – when you stretch a muscle, you're basically turning you're, – if you look at like a, a muscle like a, like a light bulb, right, and if you put a light bulb on a dimmer switch, right. when, you turn the, when you turn it brighter – I mean, the light's going to go brighter when you, when you go down, it's going to become more dim. And when you stretch, it's like dimming a light switch, right? So if something's tight, you try to dim the light. So that way it's not acting as tight. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so overstretching, dimming the, the light or dimming the stimulation to that muscle can cause adverse effects. Absolutely. So, and, and, um, moving past that to the whole CrossFit box thing, I, I will say that CrossFit has brought a lot of new people a lot of money and a lot of new concepts into the weightlifting and CrossFit world. And what that has done is basically there's a lot of good and there's a lot of shit involved that has come to, and people have to sift through what is junk, what is good. And that has made it a little bit harder to focus on the essentials, which is get good rest, right, right. Eat, an, eat enough food and train hard. See the you thing know? with me and CrossFit is this weird and you're so right, by the way, the thing with me, it's this weird dance. It's this weird relationship because CrossFit has helped out weightlifting so much. True. It's true. changed people's lives. It's brought so many people to weightlifting. Mm-hmm. It's made it popular. It's done so much for weightlifting. And the community is fantastic. It really is. Um, just to mean it, you know, just doing 200 seminars around the world and getting to meet people, it's just, it's been, it's quite the family. It's a great community. But on the other hand, it's like sometimes I just get frustrated with CrossFit in the weightlifting world because of the diet and because of how many people we lose in weightlifting that go into CrossFit. Um, You know, the the constant battle I have with the technique, the way CrossFit teaches weightlifting technique, uh, it's it's something that I I completely disagree with everything that CrossFit does as far as technique and weightlifting. And just, just to be blunt with you. And so, you know, programming, and I can go on. So it's this weird relationship I have with CrossFit of, like, loving CrossFit, but also being, you know, kind of butting my head against CrossFit. So I don't know what you think about that, Jared, but that's just my thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
Kevin, so Kevin Ogar lives like 20 minutes from me and he's uh, one of the CrossFit level one staff. And so he and I'll hang out. I'll work out at his gym at uh, watchtower and he and I'll mess around and play guitar together like once a month or whatever. That's cool, man. And, uh, yeah. So the, the luxury of that is that I've actually had the opportunity to talk with him a lot about the CrossFit philosophy and where the weight thing in CrossFit teaching comes from. And I think it's like this, right? If you want to focus on CrossFit as a sport, then you're going to take your level one and you're going to learn weightlifting as a CrossFitter. Right. And, and we, let's just, so weightlifting to you and I traditionally is a snatch and clean and jerk. And how much can you do in those two lifts? But in CrossFit, a snatch or a clean or a shoulder to overhead might be, I need to do 30 reps for time. So if you look at the technique to do a snatch for 30 times as fast as possible is not going to look like a snatch for a one rep max. So they're teaching a little bit different technique to keep you from blowing out certain anaerobic muscles. Right. Um, so I definitely would say that if you want to be a better weightlifter, meaning snatching and clean jerking as much as possible one time, the CrossFit, uh, technique is not going to do you justice, but if you want to learn to do your Isabel or grace 30 snatches or clean jerks for time, then the CrossFit style could, could help you. So basically it comes down to this. If you want to be a better CrossFitter, go to a level one or take a course with, you know, whomever is going to teach it to improve your CrossFit. But if you want to Olympic lift better, go to an attitude nation seminar, go to an American muscle seminar, go to a USAW level one or two and learn it that way. So you got to remember that weightlifting and CrossFit is a, is a different sport. It is a different movement Thank you. and it really needs to be treated, treated as such, you know, cause yeah. if someone comes to me and says, uh, you know, so, so say for example, and this has happened to me, people have come up to me at a seminar and said, well, I learned to snatch like this in my level one. And then I'll sit down with everybody and say, okay, you went to a CrossFit seminar and you learned a CrossFit snatch, but today we're learning an Olympic lifting snatch. And really we're talking about similar movements, but they're a different sport and, and really they're different. Yeah, movements, that's, you know, you know? I, I, I'm glad that you, that, you that's, that was well said. That was very well said. Oh. And oh, thank you. I, I 100% agree with you and I'm known on the show to, to not agree with many people. And I like to argue and I'm the first one that'll come at you. And I totally 100% agree with you. And I think there's a lot of people out there that disagree with you. That's why this podcast is so awesome and comment below. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. And, and honestly, I, you know, the only reason I can develop that opinion is because I've had a lot of discussions, a lot of controversial discussions with people. And yeah. the only way that we can grow and learn more is by, I mean, debate or at least listening to other people's opinions, you right, know, and I, right. I, I pride myself on my ability to listen to people. And then from what they say, I can develop my own opinion. It doesn't mean I have to argue with you, but I can listen and then I can choose to agree or not. And yeah. then based on just, it's like this, right? If we just learn to listen to people, it's amazing what you can learn. Yeah. Knowledge bomb. I wish I had my bomb thing set up right now. I'm excited <laughs> about posting these on YouTube now. This will be the first one on YouTube and, um, or together that we've done. And, uh, it'd be cool to read the comments and interact with people because we really can't do that on the iTunes. So. Yeah, uh, this will yeah. be this will be something really special. Well, well, Fleming, I don't know, man. I, we got to get it uh, wrapped up here, but I just want to let you know that I am so excited to see you this weekend. I am so excited to see you lift weights. The comeback of Jared Fleming is very exciting for myself and for all your fans out there. Yeah, well, thanks, man, and I I really much look forward to seeing you and seeing people I haven't seen in well three or four years and just hanging out. Don't be shocked. I'm skinny. I'm like 190 pounds. Like we, like we said last time, man, I, uh, I got on the scale. I didn't get on the scale this morning, but yesterday I think I'm at like 87 kilos, which is oh yeah, like 192, God, 190, you, yeah, 192. You're going to snap in half. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, let's hope that doesn't happen. You're going to snap the bar in half. Yeah, that. Let's hope that does happen. Are you gonna slam the bar? You know, you know. I I started to think about what kind of demeanor I want to carry myself yeah. with when I lift, and I and I came to the realization that, kind of like what we talked about earlier, 
I don't really have much control over that. When I get out there and I grab a barbell and I'm in front of a crowd of people, I don't know what I'm going to do. Like yeah. I might rip my singlet off and like <laughs> scream and chuck weights, but, or I might just humbly walk off. I don't know. I mean, I, I honestly have, it's been John, it's been so long since I've competed on any type of significant stage. I mean, I might be tearing the head off lions or I might just be like really humble. I, I just have no idea what that's the, that's going to feel like. That's the most exciting thing about weightlifting is the fact that you let the, you, you let the, you know, the sport just take you. Yeah. It's like music. It it, it really is like music. It is weightlifting is its own art form. It's just like dancing or music. Right. You just let the energy flow through you and take you where it wants, you know? Right. Well, I'm gonna say, well, yeah. look, it's only Tuesday. Let's do it. Um, oh, God, my computer's about to die. It's only <laughs> Tuesday. Let's do one more show on either um, tomorrow or Thursday before we fly out to Milwaukee. Yeah. 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 We could do tomorrow. Thursday I fly out. I'll be I'll be okay. flying on Thursday, so we could do we could do tomorrow night. Yeah, we could do a quick one tomorrow just to say hi. Yeah. Talk, okay. Well Jared Fleming, um I look forward to seeing you. Um everybody that's going to the AO, um look out for me and Fleming. Let's get some coffee, let's get some dinner, let's grab a beer, let's have some fun. Um big shout out to my team, Team Do. Uh do weightlifting and um yeah, have a good night, Jared. John, till next time, buddy. See you this weekend. All right. Later, guys. Comment below.